Now, if you are a regular to our roofing portal channel, you'll know that our last video was about flashings. Not the gumboot and raincoat type of flashings, but roof flashings. Now, I may have done a video on flashings, but do I really know anything at all about flashings? Now, I heard this in an argument the other day when a few podcasters got angry at each other and the question thrown around was, have you actually been there? Now, this may or may not have been a valid question to ask in that instance, but right here, when I'm talking about lead flashings, you can quite rightly ask me, have I been there? So this video is about lead flashings and it actually shows that I've actually been there. Now, as you probably know from the last video, there's a push in Australia against lead because it's poisonous for collecting water. Uh, and it's main, that's the main reason why there's a push against lead and there's the change towards using the lead-free flashings. But apart from the fact that lead can be poisonous, I found that there's another limitation with lead that's not talked about very much. And this is one of the shortcomings of lead. And what is this shortcoming? This shortcoming is because lead is very inelastic. In other words, there's very little expansion and contraction capabilities that's built into lead. And as a result, lead cannot stretch very much. When you apply heat to it and there's expansion and you apply cold and there's the contraction. So over a length of time, imagine if you had lead on your roof, it would try to grow in the summertime and shrink in the wintertime. And that movement causes lead to fail. It just can't hold itself together. And what happens is that it cracks. Now, there are only certain situations where lead is going to fail in that manner where it cracks. Because if the lead is in a short piece and it's not constrained on the side so that it can actually move, then it will expand and shrink without anything holding it back. So therefore, there's less likely chance that it's actually going to crack. But as soon as you lay lead on a roof and it's a relatively substantial length and you constrain the ends, what happens is that the ends are held in position so the lead can't move in and out anymore. And because it's held down, the only way that lead will be able to relieve the stress is actually to break, to crack. And I've actually been there. So there's this parapet wall, the roof's not that old, and there is a lead flashing. It's used as a soaker flashing. It's the upstream end of a parapet. The roof falls to it and the water hits the parapet. So it needs a bit of a, like we call it a soaker flashing that catches the water and drains it out on either side of the parapet. And the owner said, I'm just experiencing a leak quite recently. It's happening at the front door and the water is dripping down the ceiling. And when we had a look at the soaker flashing, you could see that two things have happened. One, obviously there's been cracking on the lead soaker flashing. And the soaker flashing is about three, three and a half meters long. There's been some cracking. There's already been some repairs. Someone's gone in and put a patch over one of the cracks. And the other crack has been simply silicon over. Now, this is what I call short-term fixes, just to seal the cracks that appear. Now, over time, what will happen is that these repairs will fail. But not only that, there'll be other cracks appearing along the length of the soaker flashing. So this is a situation where lead just simply fails. You just should not use lead in this particular situation, whether you are using the roof to collect water or not. So what's the solution to cracking lead? Well, if you've seen my previous video, you'll know that we've got the flexible lead-free flashings. And the ideal thing about these flexible lead-free flashings is that it is flexible. So we'll go through this series of pictures and videos and we'll show you how we've gone in, removed the lead flashing, cut it out, and in its place, we are putting in a Walker Flex lead-free flashing. Now, there are a few tricks to replacing the lead with this lead-free flashing, and we'll show that to you in the video. 
Now you'll see that we've removed the roof tiles to expose the lead flashing and we can see where the crack is. The next thing we do is do a bit of investigation work and see how they've actually installed the lead flashing and how we can replace the flashing. So we discovered that the lead flashing was installed in a single piece and it's actually embedded into the wall. And because the lead's embedded in the wall, it's severely restrained in one direction. And that's one of the reasons why it started to develop cracking. So after a bit of discussion, we decided that the best thing to do was to actually remove the flashing and leave a, a tail hanging out from the parapet wall where the new flashing can go behind. And as we cut the lead out, you can see where the main weakness is. It's just split into half. Now, since the outcome we want at this parapet wall is no leaks, we've got to look at other sources where water can cause the leak besides the crack in the lead. And if you have a look at the roof bill, you'll see that the sarking's been laid all the way up to the parapet. So these tiles leak and when water gets onto the sarking, it'll run down the sarking. It's got to be able to flow into the gutter. And at this stage, you can see that we can't lay the sarking on top of the new soaker flashing because of the difference in height. So we've got to come up with some other method to drain the water out. And this is what we're measuring up for. We are going to measure up for a small strip of sarking that will tuck in where it's lapped. And the intent of the new bit of sarking is to catch any water that comes down the sarking and drain it out on either side of the parapet wall. So we've done some preparation work. We've taken the battens out and now we've put in the new bit of sarking. We're now going to put the battens back and we've got the solution to the lead flashing and this is the new walker flex flashing in this instance we'll be using what i call the double width walker flex flashing now walker now walker flex normally comes in 280 wide this particular one is double width so it's 560 wide and we need the extra width to be able to construct a soaker that's got adequate capacity so the smart thing to do now is just to cut the walker flex to the length and just lay it on top of the battens where it's ultimately going to be sitting. And once we've got the walker flex in position, then we can mark in the cuts so that we can do the cuts around the corners, the tabs. The next thing we do is we strike a string line on top of the walker flex to give us the line where the walker flex turns up and goes behind the tail of the lead flashing on the parapet wall. And once we've got the line, we can then bend the walker flex flashing into a right angle and the vertical piece of the walker flex will go behind the over flashing on the parapet wall. Now, once we're up to this stage, we have to decide what to do with the backing. Now the Walker Flex flashing has a backing plastic to keep the whole roll together and the intent is that usually you would peel the plastic off so that you can stick the Walker Flex onto the roof element. Now in this particular instance we've decided that there is no need to remove all of the plastic. In fact we can retain most of the plastic. The only bit of plastic that we need to remove is the thin strip along the sticky edge that's going to stick onto the wall of the parapet wall. The rest of the walker will have the plastic backing left in place. Now this is not usually how roofers would put walker flex flashing in, but I think this is the way in this instance it should be done. You don't really want the rest of the walker flex to be sticking to any other element. You want it to be able to move. So once the plastic's off, what we can do now is, now we can stick the sticky edge of the walker flex flashing up against the side of the parapet wall. And that's the only bit of the walker flex flashing that is stuck to the roof element. 
we now make sure that the corners are done correctly so that when the water runs to the side of the parapet wall, it will run out towards the gutter. And now what we do is we turn up the other side of the walker for expression with the plastic intact so that it's not sticky. Uh, it doesn't stick to the underside of the tiles that's going to be put back into position. So it's folded back with the plastic intact and this gives us the upstream fold so that the water doesn't run back upstream. So once that's done, the bulk of the work is finished. All we have to do now is dress all the flashings up. We need to have additional support at the two corners so it's supported, so the Walker Flex flashing is supported properly. And now we can put the tiles back. And the end result is a flashing that is flexible and that's going to move with the temperature, it's not going to crack. And we've got an additional bit of sarking underneath it to catch any water that's going to go through the tiles in the future. So now we believe that we have hit both sources of the leak and now we're confident that this is going to be the final solution. Well this is how the job was done and I've been there. I guess it gives me a plus in terms of authority. Now in the videos that we'll show on the Roofing Portal channel, a lot of what we'll show you will come from I've been there. But also a lot of it will be based on really deep research and we've got AI nowadays to help me do the deep research and it, it helps to back up my theories of what I see on the ground, on the roof. And it kind of gives me more confidence to actually to say things the way that I see they are. Now my aim is not to be the authority, my aim is to throw out my ideas to you so that you can be the final judge.